Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. In this video, I am going to find out the indices for the direction D. As you can see here, this is the direction D whose Miller indices I am going to calculate in this video. So let's see how we can do that. We have already calculated the indices for direction A, B and C in separate video. If you are interested, I will link them. So let's quickly get started with direction D in here. And the first step always is to define the coordinate system that you are going to follow. And uh, I'm going to use this predefined coordinate system system because it works fine in our situation. So this is the X axis. This is the Y axis and this is the Z axis. And uh, the point where the three axis lines are touching each other is this point And this is called as origin. Now, this point will be taken as origin throughout our calculations. And in that way, the first step is done. Now, let's move to the second step, which is to find out the tail coordinates. So we can see the tail is located at this position and we are interested to find out its coordinates. So let's do that. And by coordinates, we mean that how much motion we have to make in X, Y and Z direction in order to reach that point. And the starting point is always origin. OK, whenever you are finding out the coordinates of a certain point, you always take a reference point and that reference point is origin here. So we will start from origin and let's see how much we have to move in order to reach this tail point. So starting from origin, what I'm going to do is to move one unit in positive y direction to the other corner of the unit cell. Since I moved from this corner of unit cell to another corner of the unit cell along y direction. OK, if you are moving from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell in either of the x y or z direction then this motion is taken as one okay whenever it's you know along the axis direction you always take it as one but it's not in other cases when the direction of motion is not along the axis direction for example if i would have moved from this origin point to this point directly for example it's you know one corner to another corner so this motion is not equals to one okay because we can see here that this line is not parallel to x y or z direction so that is why this motion is not taken as one so it should be parallel to one direction at a time so we can see here that this length is one because it's parallel to y direction and it's from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell. So we moved one unit along y direction. Now we need to reach this point. So for that purpose, we have to move, you know, let's see how much we have to move. So we can draw a line that is equals to one. This is the total line that is equals to one. And if we cut it into half, then we have reached the tail point. Okay. So this is actually where the tail point is so we need to move only half unit along positive x direction in order to reach this tail point so yes we moved one over two units along x direction and no motion along z direction is needed so uh, the z coordinates is zero so we can write them in um like that okay tail coordinates are we moved one to one over two units along x direction one unit along y direction and zero units along z direction okay you always write it in that order x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate however you can make the motion in any order okay just like i did moved along y direction first and then along x because it's the shortest path that we can take and if you would have taken other paths like this along x first then along y and then in negative x okay you you are just taking multiple steps so choose the path that is the shortest possible this is the tail coordinate now the third step is to find out the head coordinate all right so let's calculate the head coordinate and we can see here that where the head is located and head is located at this point you can see here that head is located at this point and this is the origin so let's see how much we have to move in order to reach that head point and um as I told you people earlier, whenever you are finding out the coordinates of a particular point, a specific point, always start from origin. So I'm starting from origin and I'm going to map out like how I can reach the head point. So I'll move one unit, one, one unit because I'm moving from one corner to the other corner of the inner cell. 
along x direction so this is one along x i moved here now i need to move vertically upward to reach this point and they have already mentioned that this is one over two along z okay and you can also check it out by drawing the line that is equals to one okay this length would have been one from this corner to this corner this length would have been one and if we if we cut it into half this is exactly the point where the head of the vector is lying so you can have an idea even though if you know none of the information extra information is given you can know that it's half so we have to move from this point onwards we need to move half units along z direction to reach the head point and no motion along y direction was needed so the head coordinates are simply you can see here the head coordinates are 1 along x 0 along y and 1 over 2 along z we have successfully calculated the head coordinates and tail coordinates and let me tell you that these are the actually central things to calculate while finding out the indices okay you just need to find out the head and tail coordinates with reference to origin that you have selected in first step the step four is to subtract the tail coordinates from head coordinates so we'll have head minus tail coordinates we'll perform this operation so i'm gonna draw this table and we have x coordinates here y coordinates here and z coordinates here so we will do the subtraction for x coordinates here subtraction for y coordinates here and subtraction for z coordinate here so first of all let's do it for the x coordinates so first we'll have the x coordinate of head which is one minus the x coordinate of tail which is 1 over 2 okay let's see what we got 1 minus 1 over 2 is actually equals to 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 here next we have y coordinates of head first which is 0 minus tail which is 1 0 minus 1 is minus 1 so we got minus 1 here order matters here so keep that in mind we will have the head coordinate first and then tail coordinates so for z we have 1 over 2 here for head minus tail is 0 so 1 over 2 minus 0 which is 1 over 2 all right so these are the numbers that we have got so far now the next step is to remove fractions so in order to remove fraction we'll multiply by the lcm of denominators okay so we can see that we have two in denominator here and two in denominator here it doesn't have any denominator so we have two and the lcm of two two is again two so we will multiply multiplying by 2 by each of these numbers okay because we want to remove fractions fractions are not allowed so we are gonna do that and we have minus 1 multiply 2 1 over 2 multiply 2 so we are supposed to multiply a positive number always okay we are not supposed to multiply negative numbers it's always positive we don't incorporate negative negative negativity in these numbers okay we always take just the number not the polarity of it so 2 and 2 cancels out and we have 1 it's minus 2 and it's 1 here as well okay by polarity i mean that if it would have been minus 1 over 2 then you could have you are supposed to take 2 only not minus okay so that is what i meant 1 minus 2 and 1 now the last step is to see whether these numbers are in least integer form or not if they are not then you have to divide them with a suitable number so that they are in least integer form and we can see here that we got 1 2 and 1 and they cannot be reduced further i'll explain that step later on okay uh, but for now we can see that these are the final miller indices because uh, they have undergone through all of the processes and they are not fractions and they are in least integer form and these are actually the final indices of direction d we have one two bar and one so first of all we'll write the x index then y index and then z index enclosed in these square brackets these are actually the miller indices of direction d all right so we have done it so the first step is to define the coordinate system find the head and tail coordinates subtract them do that operation and after that operation make sure that the number that you have got are not fractions and if they are fractions then multiply the lcm of denominators with each of these numbers in order to remove the fraction just as i did in this example you can see that i multiplied the lcm of denominators denom denominator was simple 
and we multiply by 2 and we remove the fraction and also make sure that the numbers that you have got are in least integer form by least integer form we mean that sometimes we get numbers like 4 2 and 2 we can reduce these numbers by divide, dividing them by a suitable number like we can divide all of these numbers by 2 and they are all divisible by 2 so it's 2 2's are 2 1 and 1 so we can write it as 2 1 1 equivalently and we can now reduce these numbers further on so this is the least integer form so by least integer form we mean that they are not divisible by any common number all right so we can see here that it's one two bar and one we cannot divide them further and that these are the actually final directions uh, directional indices you are not supposed to do this step in case of planes but in case of directions you can do that it's because of the property of directions like um, if you have a vector let's say it's a c vector and we have another vector that is d and they are uh, or you know or it's a scalar multiple of d vector then c vector and d vector the unit vectors will be same but their magnitudes will be different it's like that situation and miller indices since they are used to point and represent the directions not the magnitudes that is why all these scalar multiples and least integers and all that they all represent the similar direction so you can do that in case of directions but not in case of planes that is it for this video i hope you got it and if you have any queries you can ask me in comment section till then take care and goodbye keep watching